I'm here with Jacob Etherrealm. It's always a pleasure to speak with this man, this great man. Always, I always have a blast talking to you. What's up, Pedro? How you doing, man? Uh, man, I love when you're in town because we get to talk a little bit about music. We get to yeah. talk about you guys. And I was looking forward to this tour stop because you've been super busy. You've been touring Dude, all over the place. I am tuckered out. <laughs> uh, uh, how are you dealing with, with all of this touring? Like, this seems a little bit... Almost, I don't want to say too much because obviously you're enjoying. Uh, yourself, no, it's but. too much. No, no, it is. <laughs> no. Like, I mean, it's it's sick. It's like it's like testing, you know, everything we've like so far. We've done two legs of two weeks with Avatar, and then we're on this one, which is four weeks with Tear and with Trollfest and with Dread Crew Vodwood, and um, we're sort of testing the limits because I've never done eight weeks in a single year before, and so we're doing all of that right at the beginning of the year, and then what I've told everybody on the team is like. All right, we're getting home. Nobody fucking talk to me. We're working on the next album, you know. <laughs> oh, that's the plan. Yeah, well, that's my plan. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, you know, there's, we. I specifically told them don't look for tours in this time period because I, I want to be at home for a bit, but I also want to work on the next album. I, I want to like get the uh, new stuff done. Were you inspired by Winter Sun announcing the release of Time Two? Is that yeah, what yeah? Like? We gotta get a move we, we, on. We man. gotta get the crowdfunding it's going. happening. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what inspired you to take some time off of the road to work on a new record? Well, it's honestly. Not, I mean, I, I'm going to listen to Time too. I'm really excited. But no, I mean, it's just the fact that it's been a lot of of moving. And so, you know, real life, you get kind of, you got to catch up on that when you get back. So we've had these two, like, little two-week periods this year where I've been able to do that. Um, and, you know, I'm going to need to do it again when we get back. So, you know, it could be a lot. And we got a smaller team on this tier tour than we did on the Avatar tour. Um, Avatar was like, we had uh, Yasuka Miller doing front of house and TMing for us specifically. Um, it was the first tour that we've done in Europe where we've had to do our own transport. So we had to like hire a van, hire a driver, hire the trailer. And um, I think it went really well in that regard. We're testing the limits, I guess, as, as of what we can do in a given time frame as a band. Because pretty much everything this year is like, pretty new we're we're in a little bit bigger rv now we've got some room for some more people with us we're, we're bringing bria everywhere on merch you i know, see you, you upgraded from the van from the extended van uh yeah yeah what's up no no let him in let him in oh, let him in what lies fabian what's yeah. going on <laughs> it's troll fest they're back and they're here for round two i've stolen your green room boys i'm sorry well we have a we have a troll fest takeover troll fest takeover what do you have to say for yourselves well, uh, I don't know. Okay. What do you have to say for yourself, Yostar? Testicles. Testicles. Sounds you like heard a, it here like first. A Greek, uh, a Greek god or something. <laughs> yeah, he was. The god of sperm. Of human fertility. Yeah, the god of sperm. That's that's what it, that's what I'm going with at least. Um, but anyways, you know, it's yeah. We've got the the RV sick. Like, I used to have to. Uh, bye guys. Um, I used to have to... By, uh, by the way, sorry to interrupt you, but this is what happens when you do an interview backstage during a tour. Oh, yeah. Like, every time, like, man. Shit goes sideways <laughs> all the time. It's just, it is what it is. It is what it is. We've st we stole their green room, is yeah, what we did. Yeah, there's a lot of playing flamingos uh, lying around, I must say. Wow. I don't know if you got them in the shot, but put that in, in the B-roll in post. Yeah, uh, yeah maybe I'll, I'll save that for uh, <laughs> for the Patreon yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> But what you're saying? Yeah, we're, we're just pushing the limits. We're learning new stuff on all of these runs. The Avatar run especially, that was like a production that I would say is only second of, as far as shows I've seen to like Mashuga, you know? So, and you know how intense that production is, how intense the like, uh, you know, they've got these like 500 pound steel light towers they've got to get up on stage every day. They've got like a, you know, 10, 12 person crew running it and it is like a machine. You know, so I really feel like I learned a lot watching them. Um, and of course their band is uh, very tight. You know, they've, they're very tight and they create all these moments uh, during the show, which I think is really what it's all about is hitting these memorable moments. And they really craft those really well. Um, Trollfest does this too, I think. Uh, they, yeah. Their I, I Congo mean, line in the pit and everything. They're, they're so two very different bands with two very different styles but they definitely know what they're doing uh, the avatar tour uh, to me it feels like a way for you guys to kind of set the bar and and then adjust yourselves to that bar depending on where yeah, you're going next that's what it felt like um was was you know oh these are these guys are professionals you know and then we had to sort of step up our game a little bit we got we came back from that 
Uh, it was like, I mean, I'm not, you know, not to go into numbers, but it was an expensive tour. Not because they didn't pay us well. They paid us great. But uh, just doing Europe as an American is you got flights, you got transport, um, you've got taxes sometimes, depending on if you fill out the right forms that say you don't have to pay them in a given place. Um and, you know, then you lose a little money on the currency conversion going around. But all in all, I was happy with how it went. And, I, the, you know, one thing I've learned is that those, those Europe shows were huge. But uh, the Americans really, and I mean, also the Canadians, too, to a greater degree, they really buy merch. Like, I was going to ask you that. Far more than the I, Europeans I, Yeah, do. I was going to ask you that because uh, every band that I've talked to lately that's been touring across North America, they're all renting and raving about their merch numbers. How quickly it's selling out? How many uploads they have to do? Yeah, like reload here, reload two cities later. There, it, it's crazy. But when I was, I was just in in Europe. I was at uh, Inferno, and they were selling incredible merch there because of the bands that are playing. But I didn't see as much interest from the audience to go and buy merch as I see at just even shows here. I think it's a cultural thing, man. I think like you know, I don't know as much about the Canadian culture, but I think maybe North American as a whole, it's more like, you know man, let's get the thing, you know, let's, let's, let's buy the experience. Um, I don't think it necessarily has anything to do with like how much support you're getting. Cause clearly they're all coming out to the show. They're jumping up and down mm -hmm. in the audience, you know, they're happy to be there, but it's like, you know, it's like how you don't tip over there and you do over here. Like I think it's the same kind of thing. I think people just come ready to b buy more merch in North America. You know, they, the, standard budget for a fan is higher or something i don't know i mean that's what at least if you if you break it down to like how much like per head at a show you're making uh it's it is a lot higher in america so i, I have to ask you this also about merch because it, it starts to be it's, I, i'm starting to notice this quite a bit when you see a tour going out with two or three bands and sometimes the opener is charging the same amount of money as the headliner, mm -hmm. which could be a little bit difficult for you to pull the numbers because if the price is the same, people will buy the headliner's T-shirt more, yeah. more often than not. What's your views on, on, on that? On, on, like, price matching? Yeah. I think it's fine. Like, I mean, it is, it is like a contractual thing, right? Like, if you have to price match in the contract, you have to price match. You've agreed to it, right? And, you know, of course, this is... You know, because the headliners don't want someone selling ten dollar t shirts <laughs> and then it's just, and like, you know, sneaking the tour dates on the back and everything. So but overall, I would say that having to price match a headliner has never hurt us on numbers. It has always been like my own moral desire to be like, Oh, we we can't do thirty five for a shirt. That's crazy. And then it's like thirty five these days. Sixty is the new thirty. Oh, well, we're in Can we're in Canada. Oh, okay, now. okay, okay. I think I think they're fifty at the show tonight, which okay. is like is a crazy number. Fifty is the I, new twenty-five. I wouldn't, I wouldn't set that, you know. But that said, ultimately people still buy it, and uh, it it does not hurt our numbers. So no, I, no, it's I'm still, not, it's, it's I'm still go your, out there and complain about it's it. It's still know? one, of, not just for you guys, but for anybody. It's still one of the main resources of revenue. Yeah, I mean, tour. it's the only way that it's it's able to happen because, like, you know, the expenses go up. You know, inflation's and. I don't, how much am I allowed to swear on your channel? You can swear as much as you want. Inflation is a motherfucker, man. Like that, uh, uh, you know, RV costs, gas costs, all of it just always going up. And so then it just ends up, you know, where do we find it? Okay, well, now shirts are $35. And he's back. Come on in. What's going on? This this motherfucker's birthday two days ago. Yeah, oh, get in here. <laughs> What up? Come crash the interview. No, you're crashing. Yeah, you, you, you're crashing. You, you, Come you, in. You Come can in. sit on his lap. It's totally right fine. It's totally fine. You can come All in. Right. Here we are in rainy Toronto. Hello. It's wet. It's going to get ate stinky. Ramen. Ooh. I just ate ramen. Oh, nice. I think he's giving me you earlier. a warning. I think that's what he's doing oh, right now. Give me the ramen? You have to pat my back right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that was a burp and not something else. No, I, I, I felt something. In the bathroom. Sorry. <laughs> uh, maybe it was something else, <laughs> or, at least, something. or at least the beginning of something else. Hey, you I left mean. something on me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like I said before, when you do uh, an interview on tour, you never know what's going to happen, and uh, it's part of the fun. Are y'all needing to uh, sneak past? You look, okay. You're just hanging. You're just watching. 
watching the show. Uh, I know I kind of forgot where we were. Oh, price matching. You say they never it never hurts your hurts. Hurt. Never it hurts. Hurt it. Hurt it always it always makes their numbers better, which is like you know great because then I can wash my hands of the moral dilemma of raising a price and also reap the benefits. It's a win win win. Yeah, yeah. I could. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. I can see that from your point of view. It's just that I always felt that. It, it puts you in a little bit of a tougher position, slightly tougher position. Yeah, I mean, it is. Like, you know, if you if you wanted to set them yourself. But, I, I mean, you know, I don't want to blow anybody's spot up. But uh, but our merch person, Bria, you know, um, she's done a lot of U.S. And uh, the headliners merch guy, Christoph, I know him from back in the day. Uh, but he hasn't done as much U.S. So he's he's kind of he's kind of going to Bria a little bit and be like, what should we price these things at? And she's... Giving him the word a little bit, so and and, 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 I, and then I get to stay out of it. You know? and, and speaking of merch, you guys always have great designs on your shirts. You guys oh, yeah. always have great shirts and, and great merch. Yeah, I pride in myself general. on on, on I, our I, sick uh, artists. You, you guys, can I hype some of them? Yeah, you can hype whoever you want. All right, so tour shirt this tour is by Kyle Smallwood. You can find him at, at Goodbye Transmission. Uh, he did the black and white design with the uh, you know skull head uh, scythe wielding guy with wings. He's he's you know, falling into the abyss or something cool like that. I gave him a very brief description and said, we need it in like three days. Go for it. And he smashed it. Yeah, you guys always have great designs. Uh, I've never seen a tour shirt or any shirt by that you guys have done or any merch that you guys have done that it wasn't like top notch in terms of, of the aesthetics of it and the looks of it. Having said that, while I was at Inferno, um, Carpathian Forest had butt plugs. Whoa! So the question is, when are we going to have some other realm butt plugs? Uh, you know, we can have them. I would, I would get one specially made for you, Pedro. If you, uh, if I would, you I would, I would totally do an unboxing. All right, I'll uh, look. We'll coordinate this <laughs> afterwards. But, um, you know, we we got our little thing, which is the daily special. You know about the daily special? No, I don't. Know All right, it. everywhere we go, as long as I have time before the show, we find some bizarre thing somewhere that we can sign and sell. And so, uh, let's see, show one, it was a happy birthday balloon, and we claimed that if you bought it, it becomes your birthday today. And then we sang them happy birthday. Uh, New York City, what was the special? No, we skipped one in New York City because it was a busy day, but then um, the following day, we had a plastic shrimp that we had covered in flowers, and we called it the Easter shrimp, and it died for your fins. And we sold that. Your fence. Uh, you know, and then I think last night we found an old sole of a boot that had come off. And we sold, we signed and sold it as an old sole for an old sole. Uh, you know, so we've been doing that. That's our that's our little gimmick at the merch table on our shit. I, I, I like it, though. The one unique item every day. And it might be something sick. And it might be an old shitty <laughs> boot sole. <laughs> I, I like the idea. I mean, not quite as penetrating as a butt plug. You know, but, you it's know. not quite as stimulating. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. And by the way, they sold out. I bet. <laughs> they sold I would have bought one. By the time I saw the picture on Instagram and I walked to the merch stand, they were gone. And they were selling them right next to bottle openers. So I don't know if there was a correlation <laughs> between the two. <laughs> but, they should but, put the bottle opener on the butt plug so you can just... Uh, I, I think it had like a strap on it that you could attach yeah. to the bottle opener. All right. So you can kind of get it all in one place. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like yeah, kind of like that. Almost like a lanyard. You could wear it like a lanyard kind of thing. And it, it, it did just really, it did so well. It was so, it was like a, a little bit of the talk of the town. So I just figured I'll throw that one at you. Maybe you guys could consider some, All right, I'm gonna something. I'm going to start like browsing. That. I'm going to start browsing the websites. I'll send you a link later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I, I can, I can totally do an unboxing. I'll totally be down with that. I think it would be a lot of fun. I tried to buy one there. Obviously, I couldn't get it, but hey. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to steal their idea. We're going to get on the game. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a talking <laughs> Wait, piece. It's a whole thing. Is Carpathian Forest the band? From the one, there's like a collection of like crazy black metal pictures, and yes. uh, the dude's like d doing his pose and his dick and balls have like torn out of the bottom of his pants. Oh, I don't know about that, but but <laughs> during their show they had a um, they had a video screen behind them showing pictures that were absolutely <laughs> disturbing. Oh, okay. Uh, which kind of went with the whole theme. I mean, it All is right. a black metal. We got, we're gonna look up that photo later because I'm gonna show it to you. I've seen it. I've seen that guy's dick and balls. The oh, front wow. man. <laughs> I think it's him. It's either them or Tak 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 or whatever. Oh, they played there as well. Yeah, it's one of those yeah. two bands. Is the one. <laughs> yeah, they, they were both on the same on the same day. Actually, they both played on the same that day. Sounds right. So maybe 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 the bottle openers were from one and the butt plug were from the other. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, we're, it's still under investigation. Anyways, yeah, yeah. 
We'll get to the bottom we'll, of we'll, it we'll eventually, on the we'll, next episode of A and P reacts. And, and let me emphasize the word bottom. <laughs> like we'll get to the bottom of it uh, at the next one. So you guys just pretty much been a week on the road, more or less, here in North America. Yeah, yeah, on this road. Uh, is, is the is the tour giving you uh, some positive vibes in terms of the? Oh songs? man, the vibes every time are incredible, immaculate. Yo Stein's vibes right now are concerned and anxious as he's trying to find something that he needs. We, we by the way, we hijacked <laughs> their their room, so that's why you keep seeing them coming in and out. Get of, uh, big dog, Yo Stein! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the vibe's been great, man. Every crowd is ready to jump the fuck up. Every crowd's ready to mosh. Like, I had to fight them in Europe, you know? I had to, like win them over every day but like north america they are song one they're ready to go so it's it's nice it's nice to like you know i still want to like raise the bar of how crazy we can get but um you know that said it's it's almost relaxing or relieving in a way where you get on and you hit those first notes and like the crowd is just already you know moshing and ready to go um so one last question for you. I mean, Donnie's been really busy. Uh, oh, yes, uh, he has. He's super busy uh, touring with Corrido Filth. Uh, sure. He's missed a few dates with you guys here and there. What's uh, up now? Come on back in, man. We're, we're having a party. <laughs> 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 keeps it, you know, yeah. on the title of this interview, I'm going to put you featuring Trollfest. Oh, that's absolutely. Because uh, Now, come back in come front. Come it's front. fine. It's fine. That's totally fine. <laughs> uh, you know, he's been missing a few dates here yeah, and there yeah, And gonna, obviously gonna, you know he's going to be missing dates in the future sure. Because of, of his commitments with, with Criddle uh, You guys are buddies Oh, dude, we live he, together You know, he's, he's always going to be a huge part of, of what this band is all about But uh, how do you manage not having him there with you all the time? I do a lot of this Hold this microphone I do a lot of this Ah! <laughs> But um, we have uh, we have a really good dude, Chris Jones from DC. He has he helped us out on one leg of the Avatar tour. He helped us out on uh, about half of the last Necker Goblicon tour. Um, and you know, it's like we've always been a band where you know somebody might have to tag out on a tour like this one. Uh, Tyler is working his big boy job, so we've got Andrew I, Ramirez. I, yeah, I noticed he wasn't there. Um, Andrew is we're using Tyler's kit. Tyler's loaned us his kit, but. Uh, Andrew Ramirez is playing drums, and um, we met him. He was playing for Hunt the Dinosaur on the last Oh, yeah, run. I remember that. And so, uh, you know, it, actually, let me tell you the story about how Tyler told me he wasn't going to be on this tour. Because I knew he maybe couldn't do it, but I didn't have confirmation. And we're out in uh, in Sweden, in Malmö, with the Avatar gang. And Jaska, the sound guy for that tour, is talking about how he's got to run sound for Necrogoblicon on the Death Clock tour, and Tyler starts talking to him. He's like, hey, man, can you, like, get me into the, uh, you know, the Atlanta show? I was like, Tyler, we're going to be on tour, man. He said, you're going to be on tour. <laughs> and then I had to... Uh, what a sneaky way. I had to uh, immediately hit up Andrew. But Andrew was down to do it. You know, we worked it out quick. It's just logistics, man, you know. Like, um, me and Donnie, like, we're, we're on the same page with all that, and uh, he's very eager to... He, he always wants to make it work. You know, he'll if, if he's got to teach someone something, if he's got to give us the rundown down on how something works, because he is really like his role in the band. I mean, he's a guitar player, but he's really a a, a skilled uh, guitar tech. He has tech for bands and and yeah, he's and done does a, it for I've us. I've seen him doing it for Evergrey. Um, just he's done it. Um, he he is the guy that's probably the most knowledgeable about um, like gear in general on our team and so you know sometimes he's got to transfer that knowledge to me or Heinrich to uh so that we can keep it cruising um so you know all that said it's it is a challenge it's like one of many challenges but like you know he's a homie for life so it's like we we work them out and we've got a good dude in Chris to to step in when we need him to and uh and it all so, so uh, with all that said when are you guys touring with Cradle of Filth man i don't <laughs> think Di i think actually um I, I I I'm maybe not allowed to say this, so bleep it out possibly. But I think it's probably fine. I think we got an offer. I won't say any dates to say anything else. But it was like, yo, uh, you guys want to do it, Donnie? You want to do double duty? And Donnie was me like, absolutely not, dude. I gotta do makeup for like two hours. I gotta get my damn cradle shoes and everything. So, uh, you know, we might do it one day. Uh, I I I heard that and I was like, that's all I need to know. I want to be at home anyways. That was like, um. That's in that stretch of time where I'm trying to buckle down and get. You're the trying next. to create your time three. Yeah, 
It's time. It's time to time to create the next Aether Realm album. <laughs> yeah, I, I I can see that. I think I think the world needs one. I'm excited. But it's for been it. a, it's been a while, so the world definitely needs one. Uh, Jake, man, thank you very much for your time. Thank as you, always, man. It's man. great to see you as always. Yeah, it's always nice to see you. And, and one thing I take from this conversation as well is that I'm not the only one that hits Ben's up for a plus one or a guest spot. I guess you guys also hit whoever you know. Oh, dude, you. every time, man. Because Tyler just you you just you just out him. Oh, like yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> he's like, yo, let me get the guest list, man. The first thing that you heard about it. He wasn't even cleared to go. <laughs> I, so I don't feel too bad now when I do it, no, so I don't man, feel too it's bad It's always now. good to see. It's always good to have Always me. a blast to talk to you. Always a blast to see you guys play. And uh, thanks for your time today. It was hectic, yeah. but we made it happen. And shout out to Natalie from Napalm for uh, being the coordinator for all this. Natalie, I'm sorry I don't answer your emails faster. I'll try to do better in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, she slapped my hand a few times as well, yeah, yeah. so I feel your pain. Mm -hmm. I feel your pain, but she does it with the greatest of intentions, and she's uh, a great person to work with, and I have nothing but love for her. Have you heard her husband's band, uh, Hoth? I've I've heard of the band, but I haven't heard the band. If oh, they makes, are sick, if dude. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, you should jam them. I, I, need, I, need, to, I need to check that out then. Yeah. I need to All check right. that out. Any last words? No, man. Any last words, No, Pedro? just just get that butt plug thing going. Let's All right, look, do tonight it. we're figuring it out. All right, man. Well, tonight. There's a sex shop across the street. Hey, listen, if you if you want to do a vlog, I'm down. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, guys. Catch these guys on the road. Uh, the tour dates will be in the description of the video. And remember, they're going to have a special, uh, a special merchandise item at every single stop. So if you pick that up... You will be the only one with that item. That we can guarantee you. So if that's not motivation enough, I don't know what is. These mics are really nice, Pedro. I think I'm, they are I'm too. The sponge them. is nice and soft. Yeah, yeah. It's tickling. Yeah, yeah. It has it has some cool writing on the front too. Like really. How cool. do you say that? Road. I don't know. It's Norwegian. It has, the, yeah, it's Norwegian. It's Norwegian. It has the thing. It's like. Sick. I, I don't know. <laughs> Shout out to <laughs> for the microphones. <laughs> yeah. On that note, guys, we'll see you all at the next video.